Friday, December 6th. The exchange rate gap in Argentina turned negative. But what does this actually mean, and what are the implications? Let's break it down. In Argentina, there are several exchange rates between the peso and the dollar due to capital controls. First, we have the official exchange rate, which is the price in pesos at which the Central Bank of Argentina, BCRA, is willing to sell dollars or forcibly buy dollars from exporters. Second, there's the blue dollar rate, the price in pesos at which Argentinians can buy or sell dollars illegally in the informal market. Third, we have the financial dollar rate, including the MEP dollar and the dollar contado con liquidación, CCL. These are legal rates where Argentinians can purchase dollar-denominated assets either domestically or abroad. Since the official exchange rate is set by the central bank, while the blue and financial dollar rates are determined by market forces, these latter two are often referred to as parallel exchange rates or market dollar rates. Historically, it's been typical for the official exchange rate to be lower than the market rate. In other words, if you wanted to buy dollars on the blue, MEP, or CCL markets, you would pay a higher price in pesos than you would buying them from the central bank. Conversely, if you sold dollars in the market, you'd receive more pesos than the central bank would pay. Why is this the case? The central bank traditionally buys and sells dollars at artificially low prices. Few people are willing to sell dollars to the central bank, but many want to buy them, creating a chronic dollar shortage in the country's international reserves. The difference between the market rate and the official rate is known in Argentina as the exchange rate gap. For example, if the official rate is 500 pesos per dollar and the market rate is 1,000 pesos, the exchange rate gap is 100%. The larger this gap, the more the central bank undervalues the dollar relative to the market. Now, exporters in Argentina are legally required to sell their dollars to the central bank at this official rate. If they could choose, they would likely sell their dollars at the higher market rate. However, the government enforces this regulation to increase its own dollar international reserves. Here's where things get interesting. When Javier Millet assumed the presidency, the exchange rate gap was around 200%, meaning the market dollar was triple the official rate. Since then, the gap has been narrowing, and recently, for the first time in history, the gap with the blue dollar turned negative. For a brief period, it was cheaper to buy or sell dollars in the market than at the central bank. So, what does a negative exchange rate gap imply? Essentially, the central bank is no longer undervaluing the dollar relative to the peso. Instead, it's overvaluing it, buying dollars at an inflated price and selling them at a loss. This benefits those who sell dollars to the central bank, such as exporters, as they receive more pesos than the market value of those dollars. However, it hurts those buying dollars from the central bank, as they are paying more pesos than the market rate. In practical terms, a negative exchange rate gap could lead to significant economic shifts. Exporters would no longer be disadvantaged by the mandatory sale of dollars to the central bank. Instead, they might even benefit. Conversely, importers who previously rushed to buy dollars at artificially low prices from the central bank would lose this incentive, leading them to buy dollars at the lower market exchange rate. But there is a problem. If the central bank buys dollars at a much higher price than it can resell them in the market to absorb the excess pesos in circulation, then the central bank's net worth will erode. In the long term, therefore, this situation would be unsustainable, making it essential to move towards lifting capital controls and unifying the exchange rate. Does this mean a negative exchange rate gap will lead to the immediate elimination of currency controls? Ideally, yes, but not necessarily. To understand why, we need to examine the causes of this negative gap and its long-term sustainability. We'll explore these causes and implications in the next video. Stay tuned!